The dangers down here are so very many, and this team of heroes has learned how to skirt them. We encountered a dark creature of shadow and rusted chains, but avoided conflict thanks to Gilda's keen eye and wit. We were set upon by a ghastly spectre, but dispatched it thanks to Krukka's clever and learned mind. These labyrinthine halls show us everything from shackles meant for creatures of all sizes, to rooms and equipment designed for terrible and cutting experiments. Chirurgical experiments, I think they're called, by awful and brutal chirurgeons. As we pressed forward, we found this place was made with the direct purpose of spying on whoever came through. And through secret doors and halls we wandered, with walls that see one way but not the other. And now, a trap is sprung upon us all. So, I was wondering, as I want to do, dangerously sometimes, mm -hmm. are you guys gambling men? Yeah. What's it worth? <laughs> I do a a, a biannual poker game. <laughs> Quite simply, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so I, I host a biannual poker game with some of my old chef friends. Hmm. Um, That's cool. It's, That's it's not like, it's not a, a it's not a big game, but. Yeah, it's not high stakes. I, whenever I say something to you, like, do you want to bet on it? Or I'll take those odds. That's not a hyperbole. That's not a metaphor. I am being completely <laughs> candid. If he's, I'm willing to bet on run something. Run the numbers quickly I'm, already. I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll give you a spread. When I say shit like two to one odds, like, I'm I'm yeah. ready for you to put cash down on that. You should, so you, you like should to make, make things interesting. Your, you should make part of your um, your poker games amongst your chef friends. Uh, part of the winnings is that uh, they all have to, like the winner or loser or something has to has to make you high quality stakes. I'm not a big steak guy, but I like oh. it. The, the, <laughs> so everybody brings a a a a, a pack for the group, a, like a six yeah. pack or a twelve pack or whatever, and it has to yeah. be good beer. Like it has to be part of the agreed upon selection. If mm -hmm. you show up with Canadian, you're not coming in. <laughs> um, and everybody brings a homemade snack, be it like a dip or chips or whatever. Yeah. I think everyone should bring the cut of steak they want to eat, and the first one who who taps out has to cook it while the rest of them play. You're really High raising steaks the stakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. Boy. That was the joke. We're normally pretty <laughs> hammered by the time somebody gets out. <laughs> That's fair. Best time to cook a steak. Just um, uh, I, uh, I can't wait you, Scott. I feel like you are. I think you're a <laughs> casino man. You know what? <laughs> I dabble. I dabble. Like I like yeah. to spend I like it as an evening of something to do, um, mm -hmm. but I go with whatever amount of money I've pre-selected in my mind, thinking I'm going to spend all of it. Okay. So yeah. I will go, I'll play, I'll enjoy myself, but I just, I just assume that I'm going to lose and the house is going to win. And yeah. that's, I'm, I'm not going to win. And so <laughs> yeah, that's, you don't I go think, in with the, the idea of winning. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, um, I've known, through the restaurant industry, a lot of gamblers and it's, yep. uh, it's, it can be rough. So I just like to yeah. have fun with it. Now yeah. putting, putting small bets on things. I'm into that. And mm -hmm. especially the weirder, the, uh, stakes. I'm super into it. Uh, Duncan and I have a mutual friend 
named Joel. Oh, I won't God. drop his last name, but he knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> I was going to bring him up without bringing him up when I. Or yeah. <laughs> And uh, amazing. I remember a very particular story about Joel where he uh, took a break uh, during his bartending shift, went down uh, two bars down and and put some money into the machines and won like six or seven hundred dollars and then uh, came back and paid someone like a hundred bucks to like finish a shift for him so that he could just drink it and have fun. And then so he uh, I mean, he didn't drink six hundred dollars, but uh, he took a cab home hammered and then woke up next morning with none of it was wondering where the hell is it oh wait when i went to pay the cab i took all the big wad of cash in my pocket and put it on my lap and then paid him and didn't put it back in my pocket he like vaguely remembered this so he got out of the cab and all the cash fell he's like it's definitely in the front seat of the cab i'm screwed so he like gets up goes to work all bummed out goes back home after that shift and then the next morning like we're talking 36 hours later or something he gets up again and he sees a 20 on his front lawn and then another 20 and then another 20 and it's spread all across his bushes. <laughs> uh, and he finds like $400 worth <laughs> goes back to work to celebrate pumps all of it back in the machine and wins another $1,200. And I was like, this wow. man will never not gamble now. <laughs> Best it's, Easter egg hunt of all time. Entirely too much luck on his side at the, in, the, in, the, in those like 48 hours total. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. That guy could just drop drop bill after bill on those machines. It's crazy. <laughs> the, like Kino machines? Uh, I don't remember what he played. It was like, yeah, it was the a Kino machine. Like yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Big fan of those. <laughs> I like a Kino in a bar. You know what else I really love at yeah. bars is pull tabs. <laughs> pull tabs are classic. Love pull tabs. I love just trying to get like, just fill in the whole table full of fucking pull tabs. Uh, I used to go so, to a bar in Victoria and uh, we knew the girl who would fill the pull tab machine and she would let us know which ones hadn't won. And uh, we would just sit in there for a long session and just <laughs> pump money into that thing. Oh and just like God. she just come by with her trays and just collect swaths of non winners. <laughs> but we went out there with like we won a couple hundred bucks, 600 bucks, something like that. And like between like 12 of us and uh, we were just pooling all of our winnings. And we just uh, just went went wild at the bar and just spent yeah. it all that night. It was fun. Nice. Is that the biggest win you've ever had? Is like the 600 bucks on pull tabs? Yeah, but that was like a big group thing. Like there was, right. you know, a dollar here, five dollars there. And then there was like a 200 and like a 50 or two. And like it all just added up. Um, my my girlfriend and I won a hundred dollars at a bar while waiting for a ferry. And that was probably the biggest win that I've been a part of. Nice. That's all Singular. right. Yeah, it was great. Duncan. <laughs> No, man. see, no, I'm, <laughs> I like my vices as more of a sure thing. <laughs> um, and also like, yeah, working at the bars and you see people just pumping 20 after 20 into a vid lot and I'll lose 20 bucks and then be pissed off for the rest of the day. So it's just, it's just not <laughs> yeah. for me. That's the most I've ever gambled at once was $20 a vid lot. And I thought, what, what was the point in that? I don't understand what we're doing here. Yeah, I've, exactly. I bought the occasional $2 scratch ticket like back in the day, but. But gambling is to, is to me like the same thing as sports. I don't get it. There is no thrill. I don't understand why I should care. I can't <laughs> ignore I the sunk cost fallacy long enough for it to pay off. <laughs> yeah. Just, right. So I that's why understand. I like my home games of, of Texas Hold'em is, you know, you come in with 50 or 100 bucks and you know that the first buy-in is going to be 50 bucks and that's mm -hmm. what you spend. And it's and normally nice a pretty good night. evening. Yeah. yeah. It's uh so you you know you spend a good evening with fifty bucks and then the last two players can decide whether they want to play heads up, split the pot, or whatever, right? Like it's, you, so you are playing for real currency and all of your chips are broken down into like actual denominations. So when mm -hmm. you put twenty five on the table, you're putting twenty five cents or a buck or mm -hmm. five bucks or whatever. So yeah. there there is something there. I mean, at least for me. <laughs> yeah. But I fucking yeah. love gambling. <laughs> I'm not great at it, but I, I love doing it. And I've had some yeah. I've had some bigger paydays than you guys have. So mm. that probably doesn't help. Yeah. Mm. I have one other really cool story that's it's not so much gambling as it was a 50-50 draw, uh, which is I guess technically, but but not really quite the same. Um 
it's an odds game at the very least. But it it's was um, are, for that's sure. a charitable donation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, uh, I have uh, two friends, Mitch and Kenny. Mitch uh, has a tendency to have a lot of things go uh, right for him when it comes to really mundane things. And Kenny has a lot of really bad luck when it comes to a lot of mundane things. And then it quite the pair. And uh, one day, uh, Kenny uh, couldn't stay at a, uh, a Toronto uh, Blue Jays game. And so Mitch ended up taking his seat and didn't have any cash when the 50-50 came around. So Kenny's little sister was there and said, I'll give you cash for the ticket. But if you win, I get 10%. He won. He won in Kenny's seat. $100,000. Woo! (laughs) And Kristen got $10,000 for lending him five bucks, (laughs) essentially. Uh, Yeah, it was a hell of a thing. (laughs) <laughs> that's crazy I, that's uh, could, uh, wow. what he called me he, he called me to tell me and he was like you're not gonna believe it and what's e- what's even more ridiculous is that it was in kenny's seat that i won it kenny's the worst luck in the world <laughs> just what a slap in the face <laughs> that's wild that's so much money that's insane it's so yeah. much money yeah uh blew my mind um but i mean the reason i brought this up is because of what you guys are about to face. Oh, back off. If you say we're gambling um, with our life. I'm I mean, sort of, life. sort of. Actually, if anything, this adventure path in this moment is gambling with your life because <laughs> you have never faced anything more uh, broad and drastic when it comes to random number generation. This, this could seriously go yeah. any way right now. Well, I'm the only uh, one in the room. Mm, well, that's not how it works. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you that's... walked into the room and triggered it. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just recap what you see. So basically, Lady Gilda has stepped into a 15 by 20 foot room and triggered a trap um, with this really delicate little trigger on the floor. And I believe I, I, I said that she notices pretty much instantly that uh, they're all over the place and it was completely unavoidable, essentially, if you walk into the room. There's a shuffling sound as all, all of this like mechanical work in the walls and floors starts to operate and boom, scythe blades appear. Now, I have not specified where they appear yet because I have to roll for that. Um, the room and the hallways are... Uh, that you the hallway that you come down on um down through which is a kind of a, a really tight zigzaggy hallway are littered with bones lady gilda sees straight ahead of her to the south another hallway that seems to zigzag immediately to her left which is the east side of this room uh is another hallway she can't see down and there are in fact two doors that lead to rooms to the northwest and southwest so you have the way you came a hallway uh to the south a hallway to the east and uh, two rooms behind doors is what you're faced with. There are bones everywhere. And the shuffling is not just happening in the room. It's happening in the hallway that you, the three of you now occupy. So Tulak, Kruka, and Carmen. And in fact, you can uh, hear shuffling happening in the other hallways. Uh, so the one of the east and one of the south. I am now going to roll. This is a reaction to this trap where these blades pop up. And I did a lot of research and even hit, hit up Reddit to make sure I had this trap very clear. I'm just, just going to say that right now. Um, We're blaming you either way. Oh, I know. But uh, he, he, if you guys aren't nervous, you should be. My heart is fucking pounding right now. I am very nervous. I yeah, am too. It would be very hard to kill me right now, but I am also very nervous. Oh, I just have bad cholesterol. <laughs> oh, Freeman. He's got a look on his face. I don't know what it is, but he looks worried. He looks slightly happy. I can see a twinkle in his eye. Oh, God. I've rolled one of the worst possible outcomes. <laughs> oh, I have rolled this. No no joke. Probably a hundred times since the last session. Um. Okay. <laughs> As a reaction, this this trap shuffles its scythe blades, then attacks, and then shuffles again. 
for every blade in your section, it will attack every person in that section. What is a oh section? How big is a section? Oh my god. Okay. This is so bad, guys. Uh, section one is where Lady Guild is at in the room. Section two is the room or the hallway in which you guys uh, arrived. Section three is the hallway to the east. I am shaking. I, my hands are so clammy. And section four is the hallway to the south. Four blades are going to travel down section two. And one blade's going to go to section three and one blade to section four. Lady Gilda is, for the moment, safe. But every one of the other three are going to take four hits from these blades. All three of you are going to take four hits. Holy is there, fuck. Um, <laughs> is there what? <clears throat> is there a save, reflex, anything like that? These are attack rolls against you. So unless you have appropriate reactions to help you, this is unbelievable. I'm gonna fucking. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. Okay, uh, you got Car uh, everyone got their AC ready. Can someone cover Carmen? Yeah, I got it open. Okay, what's happening now is these blades are popping out of these nearly invisible slits in the walls, in the ceiling, in the in the floor, and they are traveling at these crazy speeds and somehow adjusting along these nearly invisible tracks, literally aiming towards you, targeting you, despite the fact they're slicing from a solid uh, sort of foundation. They are twisting and turning and coming at you uh, because this is a complex magical trap. Um, and mechanical, so it's like a big amalgam of like try try to kill shit. Um, first attack against Carmen is a twenty four. That's a me to beat. Takes twelve slashing damage. That same blade travels through, twists and turns, and heads towards Krucka for a twenty eight. That hits. That's sixteen slashing damage. Yeah. Same blade right towards. Too lock. I forgot your name for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my name for a second. <laughs> uh, 39 to hit. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, what you call a crit. 28. Am I What's able to damage? use reactions at all? You, Yeah, you can. We haven't uh, can... technically started initiative. We will as soon as this finishes, but yeah, you have the opportunity to react. Could I use my retributive strike and grant two lock some uh, resistance to that? You absolutely can. Thanks, bud. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's 28 uh, points of damage. Reduced to what? Uh, 20. And is it within range? Can I make a melee strike against it? Yeah, you're right next to Tulak, so I'm going to go ahead and say yes, you can. You can make a melee strike against that specific blade. We'll call that yeah, blade one. Okay. She she going to do that just in case okay. it ha it's, it is breakable. That is a 21 to hit. That's a miss. Okay. Sorry, that Jesus, reduced these things by fast. what, sorry? Eight. Uh, by eight, so you took 20 11. damage. Uh, blade number two. Same order to Carmen. 26 to hit. Yep. That's 12 damage. To Krukka. 30 to hit. Yep. 20 damage. To Lock. 26 to hit. Yep. 18 damage. Blade number three. Oh my god. Carmen, 39 to hit. Uh, yeah, that's a crit. 28 damage. Um, oh shit. Hold on. Something's not calculating right here. Um, two luck. Take an additional 11 from that crit. Because this has the Holy deadly trait. Holy fuck. And, uh, Carmen's gonna take another two as well. From that crit. Two Krukka. 27 to hit. Yep. 17 damage. Two lock, 25 to hit. Oh, you're getting lucky here, two lock. Jesus. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> yep. That's uh, 11 damage. Jesus Christ. I have two po hit points left. And blade number three, or four, sorry. This is the last one. Uh, Carmen, 33 to hit. Uh, yep. Not a crit? Nope. Okay. 10 damage. Krukka, 24 to hit. Made to beat. Nine damage. And two lock. 34 to hit. It's <sighs> a crit. Two lock is dying too. This is fucking bullshit, is what I'm saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Fuck. But as this is happening, like another blade goes through uh, each of the other hallways, but none in the um, main room. And then as soon as all this slashes, slashes, boom, Tulak just hit, 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 trying to do his best to dodge. Lady Gilda like panics, tries to tries to defend, and the blades drop him, and everything starts to shuffle again. And now we're gonna roll for initiative. Holy shit! Father. Holy fuck! God. This is not good. So, Tulok just took three blades and just is, like, basically eviscerated and falls to the floor, blood spraying fucking everywhere. Gouts of it. Yup. And is dying fucking too. And honestly, you might not feel like it, but you are so lucky right now. Uh... <laughs> It could have been so much worse. Uh, remove one of those things. There we go. I mean, um, that's just a dick thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Without a roll, I, I, I just so, got put down. Yep, I know. And it, you, you could have died without having a chance to react. It would have been by the rules. I'm not joking. Um, okay. Rolling initiative. Lady Gilda, what do you got? 30. Two luck. Um, what do I roll with when I'm fucking dying? Uh, that is a very, very good question. Um, actually, let me come back to you, Krukka. Uh, cult? 26. Uh, 26. James is funny, but okay. I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I got a plan uh, to get you out of here, bud. What's Carmen got? 21. Okay. Uh, Tulak's initiative is going to be, um... One higher than the size, I guess. One higher than the size, yeah. That's what it's going to be instead of rolling. Uh, however, that's because that was a reaction from this trap before initiative roll, but it's not really not as, as in your favor as it normally would be. But we are going to start the encounter with Lady Gilda and Tulak will be right behind her. That's your little peek behind the screen there. Uh, okay, Lady Gilda. So here's what I want to do, Frame. Mm-hmm. I want to ideally with one action hoist Tulak over my shoulder, fireman style. Yep. Can I do that? <laughs> uh, uh, yes. It, I mean, it's dead weight, so it's going to be an athletic check. But yep. That's what's. Do you have a DC in front of you? Because I don't. I just want to make sure uh, I actually have to roll this. Yeah. So let me just uh, take a quick boo at what it would likely be. Let's see. Do, 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 do. DC by your level is. Something like 22, though I don't know if DC by levels. I oh know DC by levels appropriate, but um, how difficult it is is what's most important. Um, I honestly think I, it's part of me that wants to say it would be hard, but because it's dead weight, but also it's too locky, he's lies and unarmored. So I'm, I would just, I think I'm just going to keep it at a 22, is what it would be. Okay. Um, I want to point out real quick, too, that you have an option with this trap right now. You can spend one action to seek and determine whether or not there are any blades in the room that you currently occupy because it's already shuffled. So I haven't actually determined where they're at yet, but if you want, I will I will determine them right now and then you can do a seek action to determine if they're in the room you occupy, not another room though. If you get a critical success, I'll give you the adjacent room at best. Uh, and that could, and you have to spend an action to do it, but that could help you strategize what room is in what danger. Yeah, I'm. I don't normally do this, but I think I'm. I think I have to. I'm, I'm going to put it out to you guys and get your advice on it. So my initial idea is that she lifts two lock, moves over to the door, opens the door, free action drops two lock into the room, and that's all three actions. And it gets him theoretically at least out of the four danger zones that we're aware of currently, provided the door is um, open. Well, no, their third action would be. It. The third action would be to interact to open. I mean, unlocked. Yeah. Oh. Provided yeah. the door's unlocked. Uh, I mean, it sounds um, great. But if it's, to me. It, if she might just boot it open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, I also could lay on hands and bring two lock back up, but he's still going to be wounded mm-hmm. and only have 14 HP, and he will still be in theoretically the line of fire. But if I heal him. I could. That would be one action. He'd be back up. I could spend one action to seek, and hopefully find something, and then one action to raise or ready, and that would keep Gilda in the fight at least. But 
I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts or any options here? Like I'm, I'm, I'm really torn between those two actions. Well, I am going to chime in here and say the first one, because if you lay on hands me, I'm still on the ground. So it would take me one action to stand up, then a move action. Then I'd have to open a door and I'd still be in this room. Right. But we don't know that there aren't any blades in that room. That's true. Like this is, this is, this is a crapshoot. This is like me closing the door on physic with, um, Volok, right? Like, we don't know anything for certain, and since I technically killed Physic, I want to put this to the group because this <laughs> no, may no, technically no. You kill just didn't. Up. You just didn't prevent the ultimate death. Like you didn't kill him. It, it, well, it mean, would have gone down the same way. Yeah, it, it would have. That, that's the situation we're in here too, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it could just go down the same way. So if that's what you want, Scott, that's what I'll do because that's my first instinct. Uh, that's honestly, I think, just go with your gut because I don't really know another option. Because if you, yeah, I don't okay. think I have any other options to get out of the line of fire other than that. Okay, what is this door made of, Freeman? A fine question. <laughs> um, yeah, presumably wood. Um, let me just double check a little something or root here. Um, it's like those old curtains that they had between rooms in the 70s. I have like little pot leaves and stuff like that. <laughs> that would actually save me an interact action. I know. <laughs> what, what I'm trying to figure out is whether it's wor- like if it's iron, it's an interact action. But if it's wet wood, it's going to be an athletics check just to put her fucking boot through it. You know? Like, um, it is. Uh, so it's not an iron door, but it's, it's not just wooden. It's somewhere between. It's a wood banded with iron. Um, which does increase its DC, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So first action will be an athletics check to heft two lock over her shoulder, fireman style. That is a twenty six. Yep. Second action will be to move um, ten feet east to the door in the northern part of the hallway. Uh, it's west. No. West. Sorry. Um, to the door east. in the north of the hallway. And then third action will be an interact, and she is just praying that this door is unlocked. It is. Okay, free action to drop two lock into the room. Drop him into the room. Like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> Shields down. The room is empty, and I feel like has more blades in it. <laughs> I mean, um, sorry, bud. It's okay. That's more than I could have done. Thank you. Uh, two lock. It's your turn. Roll me a what you call it death Just saving don't throw. Crit fail. Can I give uh, Can I give him a hero point for this? I have you a hero. cannot I've got th- give okay. hero points okay. away. I have three um, hero points. Okay, good. Okay, good, good, good. good. Uh, so maybe just, just heroic recovery. Roll. Uh, oh, so I can just heroic recovery, and then I don't have I mean, to roll. Yeah, I, I, I believe we did, what we did before is that you would have heroic recovery like as soon as you went down. So we can assume that you've already spent that. Yeah. Rules is written. It's on your turn. Oh, it is okay. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure it's on your turn. Okay, because like that, the, that's why you move in, in the initiative order. Right, when you but roll the, the heroic recovery your... specifies as soon as you your dying condition increases, you can spend it. Um, is how the heroic recovery is, is said, but uh, but it doesn't really matter it, whether it's when you went down or whether it's right now. It's the same result. So you are no longer dying, but you are wounded one, and in a weird room. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure you wounded one. Um. And, you lose uh, you are... all your hero points when your dying value would increase at the start of your turn, or when your dying value would increase. So yeah, so that's a good question. Do you want do you want to spend them all on a heroic recovery, or do you want to spend one on a death saving roll? Keep in mind with heroic your recovery, turn. you're not you don't get the wounded condition. Oh, mm. okay. But, you but I might need healing. more of them on the way out. What a conundrum. Be funny. (laughs) Oh, God. This situation is bonkers. So if I... Can we go over death saving throws? Because I probably should have looked this up beforehand. But, like, if I... Yeah, death saving throw is basically... I think it's uh, 11 plus your dying condition. And it's a flat check. It's the DC. So your your flat check is 13. If you crit fail, you lose 2. If you crit success, you... Sorry, if you crit fail, you gain two, so you would be dead. That's what happened to Small. That's what happened to um, 
another character in an unreleased adventure path. Yeah. <laughs> if you crit success, you n- are no longer dying. You know what? I'm not a gambling man. I'm just going to use a hero. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so you're stabilized oh. at zero HP with no hero points. <sighs> Done. No Barf. hero points. Barf. Stabilized. Barb yeah, is right. Well, and no wounded condition. Yeah. Um, yep. However, okay. if he gets hit with four blades, we're fucked all over again. Uh, so that's Tulok's turn. <laughs> um, Sorry, Kraga. Ne- you just hear Gilda up, call. <laughs> next up is the shuffling side plates. <laughs> uh, and um, sadly, we're going to have three more attack that same fucking hallway. Oh, what God. about um, what about area one? Am I am I okay? Uh, you're gonna have one come at you. Okay. Yeah. Let's worry about you with your one blade instead of the sixth that will hit me momentarily. I'm doing oh, oh everything I can. <laughs> God bless you, James. God bless you. Sorry. Thank you, oh, Abadar, Phrasma, whoever you want. Bless you. This might be the heroic moment in which Lady Gilda sacrifices herself, saving everyone that's gone down. Um, Don't put that on him. <laughs> just, saying, just saying. I'm already uh, doing okay. the math in my head how to get to Kruga. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to attack Carmen. Heavier. Yeah, Carmen that's takes a 36 to hit. Oh, God. Yeah, that's a crit. So we might be oh getting the free God. sword. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god. He takes 52 points of damage. Jesus H Christmas. He well he's That was fucking... that was literally max damage. But well, he's dying too and he doesn't have any hero points. Yeah, Carmen's dead. Leave him alone. Yeah. Um Krucka uh, he came down to help you, and oh, I cannot believe he's died so fast. Uh, 23 to hit Krucka. Does not. Woo. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, and then does a 33 hit Krucka? Yes, it does. It does. It's not a crit, though, right? No, it's not. Okay, that's 11 damage. And then a 30 to hit. That's 16 damage. Okay. Um, and as you are doing your best you dodge one and you get hit and you get hit again and as you're doing it you literally from the corner of your eye are watching Carmen be chopped to fucking pieces oh. Whew, this is fucking literally heavy, limb to limb just like just it, it just goes from like ah, 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 to fucking dead silence and it is like ragdoll slicing it's brutal have you guys ever uh, seen lady- the movie Ghost Ship? No. Yes. <laughs> the opening scene <laughs> when everybody the gets opening in. scene. Oh, with yeah. the with the with the like the cable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have seen that. I have seen that. That's messed the up. Only good scene in the movie. <laughs> well, now you're doing it, you son of a bitch. How do you feel now, <laughs> <sighs> Lady Gilda? Twenty five to hit. <laughs> 25 is a hit, but she will use her reaction to raise her shield and make it a miss. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, for the listeners, just, just so we're clear on it, Carmen went down on a crit fail, which put him at dying two, and the next two blades put him at dying three and dying four. That's why we're just hand-waving all that stuff, just in case basically missed, yeah. missed that. When yeah. you're down and dying, you basically have a minus, effectively a minus four or minus six even, I think, to your AC. He was basically hit and crit the whole time. Um, <laughs> well, and any time uh, you're dying and you take damage, you just escalate to a new level. So exactly. So, uh, but you could still not get hit because you do have an AC. Um, but he, yeah. he was hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Kruka, it's your turn. Okay, Kruka is just dripping blood. Uh, like he's really not looking good. He's close to death. So he is going to stride his way. Towards Lady Gilda, um, to her east. Then he's going to seek in the room to see if there's any blades. Uh, okay. Oh, we already did the blades, didn't we? So we can't really see until the next shuffle. No, because they 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 ba- no they shuffle at the end of their attacks. So I just have to I just have to roll to see. Okay. Uh, you have, you still have to roll me a perception check. Uh, there's some blood dripping into his eyes as you uh, get <laughs> two on <laughs> two on the die for a twelve. 
you have no idea where any of them are at. You are you are probably too panicked at this point. Okay. You're just like, get me the fuck out of here. Yeah, and there's really not much he can... Like, there's no sense of even trying to heal just a little bit because it would just knock out whatever HP he has. Uh, is there something he can, like, see or do a check in the room? Maybe, like, a crafting check or something about the mechanism that's driving these blades? Yeah, uh... I can. Uh, I have to. Uh, I will. What's your What's your thievery? What What kind of proficiency do you have in your thievery? He's un- untrained. Or? With, untrained with a plus untrained. Three. Okay. Ooh, Carmen has uh, a plus fifteen. Okay, let's ask a corpse. <laughs> good thing he was a department. Good thing he was a Jedi yeah. and he force ghosted his way in. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I can't even give you a a, 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 a thievery check to, to figure it out. You need to be at least expert for this trap. Um, so, no. You I don't even think Carmen was an expert, was he? Uh, 15, debatably. Hard to know on this uh, sheet. They have. Right. The NPC sheet. Expert should be like a, basically a, a plus four um, a plus your level. So, 10 plus your dex. Um... Well, he's so fucking 15. Dead. Yeah, so he so, would have been expert. He would have been expert. I don't care. I'm worried about myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, well, he's, um, he's just going to seek again. Okay. 16. You don't want to you don't want to get the fucking me room? in the room? There's just as good a chance. Oh, I can't even see the room. Is there much room in there? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's loads of room. Okay. Well, if I die, we both die. <laughs> so he's he's just gonna pull in also a wounded creature to the north. Of the okay, um, and that brings us to round two, Lady Gilda. First action will be to lay on hands to two lock. Okay, uh, so that will be eighteen healing for you, bud. Thank you. Second action will be to. Um, I guess she's going to seek as well, uh, specifically this room. Which room? Uh, okay. The room that you guys are in. Okay. Roll me a sweet, sweet perception. Okay. Is it? I thought it was closed for whatever reason. Oh, yeah. I just, we're just, yeah I'm just doing an open. Who cares? Go for it. Okay. I privately rolled it by accident. Okay. Uh, you have no idea. Okay. You, you are also in go-go mode. You're doing your best, but... Yeah. Uh... Last action, she'll just raise the shield, I think. Okay, she's Kraka, just going to stay in it. you're a little bit more... Make sure you're safe in that room. I'll try. You can hear, like, that the shuffling still going, and you can hear one swipe through that hallway everyone was in. You hear one swipe through the hallway to the south. You hear a, a, a few of them swipe through the hallway to the east, and one, boom, pops out right next to you and goes for a sweep. For a 33 to hit. 33 is a hit. Uh, you take she 10. Will shield block. Okay, 10 slashing damage comes in. Okay, that is 8 slashing damage. Okay, and now it's two oh, locks wait. turn. No, there's no way that. Oh, I'll figure it out. There's no way it's 8. No. <laughs> uh, two lock <gasps> comes back to life <laughs> on the floor in a completely different room than he was in when he went down. And he is laying on the ground, a fucking mess. <laughs> Just cut the fuck up. <laughs> I can only imagine what that would feel like. So, anyways, he's laying on the ground, and he just is looks up in absolute bewilderment, and he is going to pop to his feet. And he says, what? what's going on? And then he sees Gilda. I mean, it's a little out of order, but like he sees Gilda just fucking trying to trying to act, take the blade and is just looking in that room. And he would like to look and see if he can figure out what the fuck is going on with this trap. OK. Uh, you want to so see one? Do you want to seek? uh We'll see what's in the room first, or no? Want to roll he wants to do a check to figure out if he can 
use his mind to determine what the fuck is going on. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's uh, it's gonna be a thievery. It's a twenty-six. Um. Yeah, you you can see that it's it what what it will take is a pretty staunchy thievery check um, per blade to properly deactivate this trap. Um, yeah. So there um, are six blades total. So Tulak <coughs> coughs up some blood and he says, there's six blades and we have to we have to take care of all of them or they'll just keep coming and coming and coming. And so does he think that there's blades within that room from that check? The room uh, the room? No, you think you're safe in that room. Gilda, if you need respite, step in here. There's no blades. It's just out there. You can always grab her by the collar and pull her in. <laughs> if you want. I mean, I don't know if she'll I... resist, but... <laughs> so can I use a thievery check from within this room to try to interact with them outside or no? You're basically going to have to determine when the blades shuffle, determine where the blades are, go to that spot, and then try and disable check. It's a huge risk. Tulok is going to use his final two actions to cast haste on Lady Gilda. To close the door on hey, Lady Gilda. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, uh, haste you're on your own. Works. <laughs> haste actually works pretty well for me, believe it or not. <laughs> okay. Haste. So he just moves his hand in steadily faster and faster and faster motions, and then the purple magic touches Lady Gilda as he weakly makes okay. these actions as blood spurts so, out from various parts of his body. I think I did this in the wrong order because I, I attacked just I attacked you, Lady Gilda, right after your turn, right? Yeah. So yeah. it should have been after True Luck's turn. But same result, uh, which makes it Karka's turn. Sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah. I sorry to interrupt you. I said that I stood up for one action. Oh, yeah. You can and then I yeah, so I don't have two yeah. actions left. Well you can still stay prone and still cast haste. Okay, I would like to do that and just recant the standing up. Sorry, listeners, oh. for killing the moment. Oh the worst. East from the ground. Uh, right, Krukka, you want to seek to see if there's any in, in the room you're in? Uh, in the one adjacent, or, like, did Tulak determine that there weren't any, uh, weren't any blades for that turn only, or ever in this little room? Tulak didn't determine at all where the blades are, just that, uh, it, you know, it's possible to deactivate each one. Oh, okay. So, first will be a seek for the so, room that we're in. So, the room that you're in. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me that. T8. Okay, you're you're now that you're in and like getting your bearings, you're pretty positive there are no openings to this trap in this room. It doesn't not appear as though any blades would have or could have come through. In fact, it it's the, for for the first time it dawns on you that there is there's no bodies in here, no no skeletons, no bones, no nothing. It's barren. Great. Um, and can he seek from like the room adjacent from the room that he's in, or does he have to enter the next room? Um, I, I, if you're like a, like in the doorway, like two lock is all allowed, but but by the rules right now, it's it's a uh, it's usually in your own room, so um, so you can't really you can't see well enough from you know between the bodies uh, uh, two lock and, and Lady Guild in your way, like checking the floor, checking the walls, checking the ceilings. You can't tell from where you're standing. Okay, uh, then he'd like to move, uh, take a step to the southwest uh, next to two lock and. Uh, search the room that they're in for anything, secret door or something. Okay. Throw me another perception. 25. Uh, yeah, you you take a step over and kind of like get yourself in the corner and look around the room and you spot a bit of a crack in the wall that's vaguely door shaped um, right to the Northwest of this square room. Oh, hoo, hoo. so I'll call it to the oh, other. Oh, fuck yeah! There, there may be a, a secret nice. passage. The, the mind may be mightier than the brain. Yet, wait. 
<laughs> There's no time to correct it. Keep going. To- even, even Krokka's like, wait, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> Confused himself. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, what, what else do you do? That's that's uh, two actions. I uh, know that was a seek for the blades. That was a move. That was a search. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're good. Lady Gilda. Lady Gilda, feeling the familiar magic of haste flowing through her, is going to sprint to the other side of the hall <laughs> with one action. Second action, interact to try and open this door. Okay. Opens. Uh, Opens to a large discolored patches of dried fluids adorn uh, adorning the floor. An oddly shaped chamber, stone desk against the west wall. Uh, with tools and bottles and jars of a variety of substances. And there is a right. door to the southeast. Right. Um, then with her third action, she will attempt... Uh, no. With her third action, she will raise her shield, and with her fourth and final hasted action, she will move back to the door. Okay. She's not going to go into the room? I, she's only got 20 feet of movement, so it's like oh, it's zipping yeah. up and down that hall. Like, you know, she's still, yep. not, you know, d- uh, differently abled, right? So, like, her, yep. her speed is, is still affected. So, yeah, it she just wanted to peek into the room and then she will convey mm-hmm. what she saw to uh, Tulak and Kruka. Okay. She's essentially looking for a way to disarm this. Uh, and Tulak, you're up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I say you're up. You're actually down. You're, you're on the ground. Pretty okay. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure if I've I'm used fine. this like this before. I was going to use the healer's gloves on myself, but I did a quick search, and a lot of people are saying that you can't use it on yourself because you have to use it on an adjacent creature, which people say rules by written can't be yourself. Oh. Really? I, you soothe the wounds of a willing, living, adjacent creature. Huh. That's odd. That's very oddly specific. Yeah, so that's just what people are saying. Freeman, I think it's dumb. Me. <laughs> that's like saying Lady Gilda can't lay on hands herself. <laughs> Love that for me. <laughs> <laughs> just because of a, a, an extra word. Like, that's that seems really stupid to me. <laughs> and, like, not... and the, Even if it was true, why? Like, there's no balancing to that. It's a once per day. Fuck it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Tulak grimaces as he touches himself in his chest and just all the wounds across his body. And just like himself. every other person who's touched you, they grimace. <laughs> you son of a bitch. He heals himself for 18 <laughs> points. And uh, okay. he stands up. You guys ever seen the taser glove? Because that's what I'm picturing. <laughs> I have not. No. <laughs> okay. It's it's like a it's a dish glove made out of a nut, and and the two fingers are the two contact points, and they're made out of the flashes of a disposable camera, and there's like a <laughs> nine volt battery taped underneath it, and you oh you, you can like actually send like nine volts through people through oh. it. It's pretty loud. <laughs> that's but. Good. I'm, I'm imagining that's what this healer's glove looks like. Yeah. It looks like Tulak's just shocking himself. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I love the idea of him shocking himself. He's like, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Okay, Heal. So, stand up. What else you got? Man, I don't even know. So within the room is a passageway out. Lady Gilda is still in there. Or is at the door in front of us? Where did yeah, Lady she's Gilda at the door out? in front. Yeah. She's she's where she is on the map. She's she's in front yeah. of you. Okay. She uh, she sorry, didn't have I enough just, movement to enter the room. I see that. I've just been freaking out and I just <laughs> wasn't sure why she was directly in front of me. <laughs> oh man. And Clarifying I, for Scott and to First I was over there and now I'm over killed, here. Then she was gone and now she's back. I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Tulak will uh-huh. use his like James are you, so Tulak looks to Lady Gilda and says are you planning to continue searching through this area or should we leave I don't know if she's been told that there's a way out Kruk has found a way oh, out yeah. here yeah I think he yelled but oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Kruk has um, found a way out if you'd like to leave now yeah, I think leaving this this death trap in a hurry would be in our best interest, yeah. 
And do I know if the blades come between... Are the blades coming before or after Gilda? They have already shuffled. They come so after you. They're coming after you. After you. Okay, so two lock will grab, we'll grab Lady Gilda and try to pull her in. Okay. Yeah, Lady she Gilda willing? In. Okay, yeah, yeah cool. I'll 100%. just let you do it. <laughs> no, no checks required. <laughs> Boom. Come, come with me. <laughs> um, and as he right. does that, he pulls her in and has his hands across the like tabard on her chest and just puts his head to her chest and just kind of starts to weep a little bit and says thank you thank you so much I I know you must have pulled me in here and just is breaking down a little bit we've lost one two luck we've lost two and now we've lost three I wasn't going to lose a fourth today I guess we should leave Carmen for now but we we should try to come back here when, when we know we can take this on we can't just let him die and never come back with the way he's left Otari. The citizens there will think that he's forever lost. He should come back the hero. Well, like you've told me about your friend Samal, perhaps sooner rather than later we'll be able to bring him back as a hero, but we can't do anything with these traps going. As soon as we can find a way to turn them off, I agree wholeheartedly. We enact his remains and bring him straight to Vandy. But until then, no thank you. <laughs> I've seen what that room can do. Uh, can, can we assume that you, you shut the door behind you when you went in? Or do you leave it open? or does it? Does she it matter was pulled in, so she couldn't shut the door. Ah, well, if you want a flavor, grab it as you're being pulled in. I'm, I'm happy with that. Oh. But if, if you want the door closed is kind of what I'm asking. Because as you're having this conversation, it's just like shuffle, 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 slice, 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 slice. Like it's very cacophonous, essentially. Yeah. Um, so I could go get Carmen right now. Uh, we're on my next turn. Carmen is literally in pieces. Oh, okay. So many so trips. You can get yeah. a couple. You you want to you want to grab the old bag of holding. <laughs> <laughs> And start collecting your marbles. Right. Yeah. How many limbs can you put in per interaction? It would take your two move actions to get there. So we're talking two full rounds to come back with a bag of cards. I can't tell you how many times in my head I went around that same description, but for two locks body. <laughs> I was like, he sliced into pieces and I was getting ready for, for uh, Scott's ire. <laughs> oh, buddy. I was, oh, man. I was feeling all sorts of feelings and none of them were I good, can't... but. Unless we're talking about James, because God damn it, I love that guy. <laughs> I got you, fam. I got you. <laughs> I cannot believe I didn't kill you. Oh, man. Oof, I need a smoke. Like, I rolled low. So most of them were just hits instead of crits. <laughs> yeah, let's oh. take a few minutes in here if you guys are cool. Um, and just do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, how are you on HP there, Tuok? Um, surprisingly enough, I'm a little over half. I have 36 of 62. Okay, Kroko, where are you at? Oh, bad. Uh, got okay. five HP left. Do you want to try and aid me on a couple of medicine checks? Does one, or what? what is your medicine, Kroko? I can never remember. Untrained and zero. He does, uh, nature checks for medicine. Okay. Uh, sweet, sweet feet. Right. Oh, but you can, can't you aid using that? Can I? Because we did that before with physic, right? With yeah, crafting. with the crafting, yeah. I'm happy to roll that over. Okay, what is what is your nature? Uh plus ten. Okay, so I'll try and aid you. Um, so I get a plus four to that. And okay, we'll do two lock, and then we'll do you. The same old DC fifteen. Yeah. Uh, so I got a nineteen. So I a I think I aided this level, or is it twenty now, Freeman? Um. Oh yeah, no, it's it's fifteen. Okay, so she aids with a 19 on two lock. Okay, a 22, so that passes. 13 HP back. Okay, and that takes 10 minutes, so I will lay on hands two lock and give you another 18 on top of that, and then we'll do the same thing for Kroga. Ooh, and just Uh, like that, it's like nothing ever happened. 
Like we were I never there. I critically failed on my aid, Kruga. So you're you're on your own here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Son for trying. Bitch. That's all right. You get a twenty-two, anyways. Okay. I was gonna say you actually give a minus one if you critically fail. <laughs> oh, do I? Okay, yeah. so twenty-one. Oh. But it's still, yeah, it's still good. It's like poked him in the eye a little. Uh, yeah. that's, that's I learned weird. this from physics. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> How am I better at this than he was? Just like <laughs> pulling on his ears. There you got thirteen back, which brings him to that's a back balmy eighteen. In okay, you can have another eighteen from uh, Gilda's lay on hands. Uh, okay. Cool. Can you also take a few minutes to try and do a repair check on my shield? Yep. Um, and repair checks take 10 minutes as well. Is that right, Freeman? I believe so, yeah. Okay, so we'll give Kruger the compass so he can get 10 HP back while he does the, the roll on my shield. Can you um, roll crafting untrained? Uh, ooh. Um, yeah, you can. For, for a crafting check of a shield, probably not. Okay. But an aid, maybe. Um, I don't think aid requires anything trained. Okay, well, I roll a 21 to aid. Okay, uh, what's the DC for the, the crafting check? Uh, 15, I think. Uh, I, actually, I'm, it depends no. on your shield. Depends on your shield. It's so there's actually a, I'm, there's a sweet macro in this. Um, yeah, I have it, that. but it doesn't say what the DC is. It just says 14 is a fail. Okay, well... Oh, uh, um, Oh, yeah, but you failed by five. So, yeah, it says, yeah, item level four repair DC 19. Right Where? That. That's what I see anyway. I don't see that at all. Oh, okay, it's so it's a DC 19. Okay, DC well, with, yeah. with the aid, he's got an 18. Okay. Uh, so that takes 10 minutes. So you get 10 back. And then Gilda will, will give you another 18 with her lay on hand. So that's 28 back. How, how are you looking now, Kroger? Uh, 64 out of 94. Holy shit, dude. Um unless we want to keep waiting, I'm I'm out of ideas. I mean, you could just sit here and lay on hands and take time and chat if you guys want. Like, yeah, let's yeah just if we if we take we another, take another okay, 20 minutes between the compass and the lay on hands will get you back to full. Do you want to yep. attempt two more crafting checks on the shield and then we can we can move this episode along? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. At some point during all this you hear the, the all the blades go silent as well. Oh, excellent. Like pretty pretty early on, probably about 10 minutes in kind of thing as okay. you're doing your healing checks and stuff. This will put us up to an hour having being spent in the room, give or take. I'm happy with that. Uh, first check is a 22. Okay, that's a success. Um, uh, and you're trained? Yep. Okay. I, I totally forget how repairs work. It, it's just a flat thing. I don't think you actually roll for it, um, but it won't be enough. So if you want to Okay, seconds of 28. Okay. Uh, success is five points plus five per per, per, pro, per proficiency rank. So those two will put it up to 62, which is close enough. Okay, okay we are looking bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Yeah. Let's sneak out the back door like a bunch of cowards. Yeah, Gilda will take the compass back, um, and in that time, she will like explain what she kind of saw in the room across the hallway. Yeah, um, let me just quickly explain something too, uh, because it was all pretty frantic. I kind of missed this last episode when you were walking down the hallway. You were actually walking along. All, you probably noticed in your view, you can actually see within rooms um, along that hallway, despite the fact there's solid walls, and because those solid walls have a transparency effect on them, so. I totally missed that. You were walking through and you saw like a room with a like a desiccated bed in it, um, and a trunk and a door. And then you saw another room that actually had like this like complete black, like you're not sure what it is across the entire floor, just like this black substance that covered it from corner to corner. And then another room that was the same as the first. When you got into the room, uh, to the main room that triggered the the sides, you could see another one with a with a bed and a trunk and a door. Um you can see through these walls. And then at one point, Lady Gilda, you actually did run down to the south there. You saw that room. You explained that room, but you had the opportunity to see down the east hallway and it led to what appears to be a dead end. Okay. And now in this room as well, uh, with the assumption that as you guys are healing and crafting, Tulak is having a look around. Can we assume that, Tulak? Absolutely. 
uh, <laughs> you discover that if you touch the wall, uh, which is it's 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 like like that right now, but if you touch the wall, it actually um, it goes transparent, and in fact, it go it gives you clear audience. It has a clear audience effect. So you, suddenly, to like when you're over like looking at the this, where the secret door is and trying to figure out how to open it, um, you touch the wall and you can see through the wall. You can see into the grand concourse that you crossed the bridge over before you came this came this way, and suddenly the, the the sound of the grand concourse opens up to you. Uh, you only to luck as long as you're touching the wall. You can hear the larger space, the ambience and atmosphere of a larger space when you're touching the wall. It just appears to be. Um, across the board like spying rooms where you can see from one side but not possibly not from the other and it's like that little tale that you told us at the beginning of this book exactly so Tulak relays the information strange if you touch upon the bricks of this wall you can see and hear what's on the other side you can only imagine people listening and watching as all these corpses fell in front of us. A part of me wants to know what's deeper within here. What it could be protecting, unless it's just for sport. But perhaps we find that another day. If you've got another haste in you, I can make a run for it, but I don't run particularly quick, and you, uh, you're not, um, hearty enough, I think, to go back into a room like that. Rude. Uh, she says looking at your, your like, <laughs> flayed clothing. Yeah. Uh, all wounds are healed, but the blood spatter is all over his... <laughs> yeah. All <beautiful> over. <laughs> black and purple tasseled cloak. Yeah, your plus um, one explorer's clothes are now plus one explorer shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking jorts now. <laughs> That's good. Shorts and a tee instead of a robe. <laughs> I mean, it so, looks like there's a beach down there, so Tula <laughs> came prepared. Yo. Um, Kruka okay. just eyes the, uh, the door that he motioned to earlier. Well, uh, a door in the secret room is worth two in the room full of blades, as a wise man once said. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the thing I was thinking as well is just like we can look for the for whatever sets off the trap and potentially avoid it. Oh, that's but, another thing I should I should point out now. Um, anyone who traveled through that room uh, realizes that like every step they took was a was a trigger plate. Like every single step. In okay, tiny fuck that. Spots. Let's get the hell out. Like of you here. can't you cannot pass that pass through that room without activating it unless you're fucking floating. <laughs> like it's not a thing. I can't gotta do go. that yet. <laughs> We gotta go ask Ian Yasmara for some other thief. That's expendable. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna try and hunt down a potion of gaseous form. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Where is that? We have options. We have a spellcaster. Barely. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's Nearly get the hell out of here. Yeah, just because Kruk is good at spelling, I wouldn't call him. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. I feel like he knows the words, but he doesn't know how to spell them. Okay. Now, the <laughs> listeners are probably like, get fucking on with it. So. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Tulak turns to them and says, another time. Let's explore further. Somewhere hopefully slightly less dangerous. And he presses upon the wall to make sure there's no creatures moving outside. Yeah. Yeah. You don't You see, you know, whatever it is you saw before, which is not much. Um. Also, I wanna, I wanna, I'm just gonna gloss over this, but I think it's kind of fun. Like the whole time they're healing and crafting, you just you're discovering what you know, the the clairvoyance and the clairaudience of this wall, and you know the secret door there, but you try to like probably try to push it or figure out how to open it at first, but you can't. So you're like touching it all over the place, and at some point you just start like banging on it, and you're like, what, why, you know, knock like why isn't it opening? Why can't I get it open? And then you realize that every time you you bang on it in a certain certain sequence, it seems to have like a mechanism that like shifts inside and you have to like slowly discover the sequence of knocks to like crack it open uh do, turns do, out do, it's do, just do, a benny hill do, theme song yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh and then when you do it it just slides open 
and it's the it's the Grand Concourse, which reminder to everyone wasn't long ago, but essentially a, it's a very long, stately hallway from north to south, frescoes that depict powerful creatures in battle, pinpoints of light glimmer in the vaulted ceiling. Um, there's uh, you're basically on the balcony edge again, um, with like rusted railings and uh, stuff, and um, to the south you can see uh, some pristine statues, some of which are completely shattered and broken. Uh, but some appear to be intact from where you're standing. And you're about 20 feet up from the Grand Concourse floor uh, from the balcony side here. So, Tulok turns to his companions and says, I'm interested to know what's in those rooms on the other side of that looking wall. Perhaps we move back in the same direction we were in towards that... I think it was a kit. Was it a kitchen area that we went through the? Yeah, it was sort of like a kitchen area. Yeah, there was like cupboards and serving dishes and stuff. Yeah. Is was there That's a door up there that I'm not remembering? That's where you found like the display case that led to the secret door, and it had the words carved in "They are watching you." If you remember. Oh uh, uh, yeah, but there's a door going east the from there, right? Uh, there. Yes, there is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Gilda takes the defend action. Tulak avoids notice. Kreka is scouting. <laughs> and they retrace their steps northeast through this zigzagged hall. Mm-hmm. And Tulak will detect magic at the door. A little uh, more wary now than the last time we were in this room. Yeah. Um, does not detect anything. Listens. Hears nothing. Nods Lady Gilda and steps back from the door. She takes her place in front, missing Carmen, and tries the door. How could you miss him? He's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> you son of a bitch, Dunk. You oh did it again. <laughs> that is... So brutal. <laughs> oh, I I did not think Carmen would join you, and it was so perfect. And I cannot. I also cannot believe he he died that quickly. That was oh, that was bonkers. Um, all right, Lady Gilda cracks the door, uh, and uh, basically there's a hallway uh, 15 feet feet ahead. There is a door to the north, and um, a room to the east, um, stretching uh, approximately 30 feet from the door to the to the far wall. Um, and in the room is a mound of white fungus uh, blossom, white fungus blossom from which, uh, from what was once padded furniture in the small, in a small like waiting room kind of thing. Um, but there's, yeah, there's basically like just like fungal furniture sitting there. That's it. Uh, Tulak would like to do a recall knowledge on this fungus. This okay, it'll be a, a nature check. Krakow uh, no. would like to aid if he's going to do that. Uh, I am. N- Tulak turns and says, Kraka, in your time in the forest, have you seen this fungus before? Well, I'm not going to make a fungi joke because I'm quite austere. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Sweet uh, anti-joke. A natural 20. Oh. Uh, you, you basically walk up and see them and grab Lady Gilda by the collar and yank her back right away. Um, These... Uh, this fungus will, will the spores that it releases will um, cause the disease fungal rot um, it's a fast acting disease caused by these tiny spores that take root under the skin and blossom within the lungs and, bud, and bloodstream <laughs> however limited exposure to the room you're perfectly fine if you just simply walk through and pass it you'll be fine if you linger you're in trouble so yeah, he grabs which, which is always fun because that. you don't know what's hidden in the room. <laughs> is it worth it? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. But so, does it have any sort of weaknesses or, you know, like some some fungus in, in the mold and shit? Sure. Like yeah. Reactive? Yeah. Because you've encountered that mold before. Um, in this case, like, yeah, you could destroy the fungus itself. But what's the, the danger is, is less about the fungus and more about the spores that are like floating, lingering in the air already. There's and not much you can do about that. Is there like a cumulative a effect? Like, is there, you say if you're passing through, it's okay. But like, if you pass through, 
and then go take some deep breaths outside. Um, or like hold your yeah. breath if you come in and search. You basically want to hold your breath as you walk through. Yeah. Okay. Um, but but like if you hold your breath and stand in the room, you're still at risk. Try not to breathe. These, <laughs> to- these spores are dangerous. <laughs> Now, in that room, there is a hallway that leads to the south as well. So you have this, uh, uh, and um, uh, I always say Lady Gilda got a peek around the corner at least, and there was a, a door short way down that hallway. So you have a door uh, in the initial hallway that leads to the north, and then through this room, a door to the south. Hot uh, dang. Tulak becomes worried at the fact that they've been sitting in this room only for a few moments, but with Krukka's reaction, and he quickly opens a door to the north. And it's a 15 foot stretch of a hallway, 10 foot stretch, sorry, uh, to another door to the north. And as he passes in, <laughs> I was so as excited he... about 15 foot hallway. It was so outside the norm. <laughs> you see, James just shakes his head every time. He's like, God, another goddamn hallway. <laughs> as Tulak passes in, he would like to look upon the hallway and see if there's any sort of traps, as he is now a little more wary. <laughs> it's feeling a little bit delicate. Uh, you do not detect or see anything. And he yeah. steps into the hall. The I'm mission. starting to think our backup characters should be wizard fighter or wizard cleric rogue. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine's none of those. Mine either. <laughs> Tulak was sitting in the middle of the hall, so hopefully someone would pass him and no one does. He steps all the way in to the next door. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't realize that's what you were waiting for. Uh, it's Gilda okay. would have Gilda would move past if you want. It's okay. It's already happened. <laughs> and Tulak will listen at this door. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here's nothing. And opens it. Opens. Opens to a room uh, with a weapon rack a stand in the northeast uh, and southeast corners. The uh, southeast rack is empty, but the northeast rack holds a hatchet made of dark crystal. Oh. Two alcoves between the racks on the eastern wall each have an open hatch and a ladder that leads down. Oh. Uh, additional exits are uh, to the um, west and north. There are doors. Tulak will avoid notice and step into the room. Okay. And if Steps nothing in. happens, he continues towards the north and to that rack. Nothing happens. I swore the rack. Like... Gilda and, and Krukka, what are you doing? Gilda's still defending and just stays in the center of the room trying to keep okay. an eye on everything. Uh, Krukka would like to go in and search the walls for secrets. Searching the walls for secrets. Okay. Speak, uh... friend, and pass. <laughs> Or enter. Whatever. Enter. Um, all right. So you're searching around. You don't see much. Lady Gilda is just standing in the center, keeping wary. And Tulak, yeah. you are... Kind of rolling her eyes at Krugga, just walking around, touching a bunch of shit after they almost <laughs> died in the hallway. <laughs> I'm being dumb. But ready, but ready to back him up nonetheless. And he also got us out. Anyways, uh, Tulak will look at this hatchet. Okay. Uh, you pick it up? Yep. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, it's cursed. <laughs> you reach out and grab this crystalline hatchet and put your hand around it and immediately are unable to pull it up. And not only that, you're unable to pull your hand away because you have become stuck to it. And... Uh- as you try to yank yourself away in confusion, the rack forms a mouth full of jagged teeth. Oh, and shit. And we're going to roll for initiative. Mimic. Mimic. Finally. <laughs> Man, I've after all these years of playing uh, D&D and Pathfinder, I've never actually seen a mimic in a game that I've played. Oh, really? I have <laughs> run so many, but I've never fought one. My fa- um, my absolute favorite piece of the stat block on this creature is the reaction it just used, um, because you touched it and it basically you automatically become stuck to the mimic's adhesive like nature. 
and the, the, the ability is called Object Lesson. <laughs> that's, so, that's a that's so a real perfect. good double entendre. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Freeman, this reminds me. I actually have a present for you, and it's mimic <gasps> related. Uh, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to say any more than that, and you can let listeners know what it is when you get it. Okay. All right. I'll give you my address. I don't want to see you in person. Um, it's just a black and white striped <laughs> shirt. It's just a punch coming out of a fucking. Yeah, that's chest. literally what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> you see this? See that? See my hand, Freeman? Yeah. Not just a hand. Bam. <laughs> uh, okay. We are going to hop on in. Uh, let's get some initiative. Kraka, what'd you get? Well, seeing uh, a weapon which he admires so much turn into a mimic, uh, he will be terrified and have a 17. Uh, Okay, Lady Gilda, what did you roll? Gilda only got a 14. She was too busy rolling her fucking eyes. (laughs) (laughs) And Tulak. Feeling like an idiot, he gets a 19. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> it looks pretty dumb, too. <laughs> uh, we are going to start with Tulak. So am I grappled? So you What's... are you are uh, basically ad- adhered to this mimic, um, and you can roll a uh, athletics check to try and rent yourself free. Um, yeah. That's basically it. Well, it's a escape DC. So, hold on. Um, oh, sorry. Athletics, yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a general. So, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was re- re- misreading something. Uh, yeah, it is uh, athletics, acrobatics, or unarmed strike, whichever one you prefer. Uh, none. Two lock eyes. <laughs> his eye fades away, and he raises his hands, and with all of his actions. A zombie brute comes bursting from underneath the floorboards. Large creature to the area to the west of the mimic. Um, let's see here. Zombie brute. Um, I thought you were just going to unload a bunch of magic missiles into its mouth. <laughs> That's what I thought too. No, nope, I want to smash this thing to bits. Oh, this is a, this is a large creature. I forgot. Yeah, uh, that's right. You can't, you can't get it in that space. There's not enough space. So you can't to the west. Get it. Oh, to the west. Sorry. Did I say east? My apologies. No, you said west. I just screwed it up as I always do. Um, all right. <laughs> From beneath is, the tiles bursts. Is that how big a large creature is? <laughs> Goddamn right. Yep. <laughs> wow. Don't let the don't let the tiles below your characters fool you because those are like quarter size, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Massive. I think that's the the perspective is really messing with me. But yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> But it's good though, because I always forget how large a creature a large creature is. Like they are really big. Like it's really yeah. hard to get your head around when there's a special cares. feat to do combat maneuvers against them. Yeah. Think about giants who can can be somewhere around sixteen feet tall. That's the height of a telephone pole uh, above ground. Like it's they're very big. Large creatures are very big. Uh, okay. All right, and zombie with brute. its one turn, the zombie brute just brings this fucking huge fist down in a hammer okay. smash. <laughs> a 23 tag. to hit. Uh, that is a hit. For 17 points of bludgeoning damage. That's 17 bludgeoning. Damage. And have the creature please roll me a reflex save. Not good. 15. Oh, it's sticky. Uh, 15 is a fail. Uh, it is now stuck to the mimic. Uh, so <laughs> the Brute and Tulak are both grabbed. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay. Next up is the uh, the door to the north. Um, also forms a mouth and launches a pseudopod attack at the zombie Brute. That's fun. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's going to be a 33 to hit. Oh, Jesus Christ, that is a big crit. Because its AC is only 15. It's a big it's a big creature. That's going to be 32 points of damage. Okay. Um, and it's going to just continue that assault. Uh, natural 20 with a 29. For another 24 points of damage. 
and then a 14 to hit. Uh, <laughs> okay, hit miss. Okay, and uh, roll me a courtesy reflex save real quick. 14. Okay, it's effectively now grabbed by both of them. <laughs> Although that the doesn't really quite grab, stack. The old double grab, eh? The old double grab. <laughs> it's now stuck to the pseudopods and, and bodies of both of these mimics. Uh, the other mimic is now going to uh, go ahead and start striking Tulak while he is held. Uh, 19 to hit. Flat-footed. Miss. Oh, 11. flat-footed. Apologies. Yeah. Oh, no. Miss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I didn't then, realize that it was already applied. I, okay. So it's just like attack, attack, attack. You're like just dodging out of the way. Uh, the third one, though, was 23. Uh, that is a hit. Okay, so you're going to take seven bludgeoning. And finally, we're up to Krekka. Oh, well, uh, loving that. Krekka is going to free action, change the grip on his butchering axe, draw his returning light hammer, stride to the northeast to uh, put the mimic into a line of sight and throw the hammer at the mimic to the north of Tula. Nice. Okay. What do you got? 18 to hit. Four on the die. Oh, it's a miss. Um, bounces off the wall next to the mimic, but it's returning, so it zips back to your hand. Well, leaves no Thor, but it was an effort. <laughs> Lady Gilda, what do you got? Not in a great position here, Lady Gilda. At least not for the two enemies. Well, it's also a mimic, so she... Having seen this thing just goop onto this giant zombie and Tulak, probably doesn't want to get in there and mix it up. Um, so first action is actually going to be a seek to look around the room and make sure the other doors and the weapons rack aren't more mimics because this okay. this got this got out of hand real fast. Well, first of all, uh, we don't know if you know what this is. This is like. Oh yeah. You, I, I'm going to require a recall knowledge check first for you to be able to, uh, to understand. Like, it's understandable you want to check the other stuff, but like, you don't know what to look for. Right. Okay. That's fine. Um, what's it's uh, be occult, occultism? Oh, bitch tits. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was supposed to be secret, but it's an 18. Uh, okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, you you don't know. You're unsure of what this is. You've never never heard or seen anything like it. Um, and you are right to not trust anything in the room, but there's not much in the room other than another weapon rack and another door. Why, and these two trap doors? Those are hatches, and they're open. They're still there. And they're, they got ladders in them, I guess, but yeah. Um, <laughs> doesn't really have a whole lot for this. Uh, Help me. Help you how? Uh, she will take a <laughs> step. I love this. With her second action, mm-hmm. and with her third action, she's going to ready an aid to um, uh, help Tulak escape. Okay, good call. Good call. Also, when you said bitch shits, all I could think about is his name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> yeah, good. that's all I ever want. That's it. That's all we need. <laughs> Everybody right, needs Tulak. a little more meatloaf in their life. <laughs> Tulak, it's your turn. <laughs> All right, and Tulak will attempt to break free with his plus zero to athletics. Well, you, or or acrobatics? Or, or, or acrobatics. Strike. Okay, perfect. And also I have the slippery uh, slick rune. Or we, yeah, you do. Uh, yeah. And so he's an acrobatics? A, acrobatics. That's a plus uno. Okay, so what am I rolling to aid Freeman acrobatics as well? Uh, you can roll. Uh, I think it's pretty freewheeling. You can roll your athletics if you want. You bet I want to. Yeah. Uh, that like is a idea. twenty-nine to aid. Poo wee. Um, that is a regular aid. So it's gonna, gonna get a plus one here. Three on the die for a fifteen. <laughs> no dice. He goes for it again. Okay. Unaided. Uh. Krugo will attempt to aid you. It's all good, buddy. I appreciate it, but I got a crit uh, yeah. for a 33. Nice. You can't, aid, you can't aid right away. You got to prepare one action and then a reaction. So you can't hey. aid in the moment. You got to do it on your turn. But Seth, that's awesome. In fact, I'm pretty sure that means you can move away with a critical success. 
uh, escape. Yeah, if you get a critical success, you can st- you can stride up to five feet away. Okay, so he moves five feet and yep. then sustains. Mm-hmm. And the zombie brute is just going to strike again against the eastern mimic. Okay. Well, whatever this thing is. The, the weapon rack mimic? Yeah. 16 to hit. That's a miss. And that's it for the two now. Okay. Uh, Northern Door Mimic is going to continue its assault on the old zombie brute. That's going to be a 32 to hit. Crit. Crit. 20 damage. Dead. Okay. Destroyed. Oh. The zombie um, fucking lumbering falls. <laughs> and then... Uh, it lumbers forward 10 feet towards Lady Gilda and strikes with another pseudopod for a 26 to hit. Ooh, uh, one second. Just building suspense. Yes. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> I was I was looking at the trigger for attack of opportunity, and it, oh. it I don't think it technically triggers until after. It, it would have to move in my range. If you had a uh, reach weapon, it would have triggered. Yeah, which she does not have out. Uh, yeah, 26 is a meat to beat with her shield up. Okay, 15 damage. Roll me a reflex. Uh, yes, she will block uh, eight okay. of that. So, Yeah, roll me a reflex. There's an 11. Uh, okay, that's a fail. And because you shield blocked, I'm going to go ahead and say that your shield is now stuck to the mimic. Um, yeah, so that's fair. It can no longer be in the raised position, and it will take a specifically an athletics check to free as a single okay. action. And next up is the other mimic, which will then lumber forward towards Tulak and is going to strike a pseudopod at Tulak and then Krukka. Uh It's going to be a 28 hit against Tulak. 12 damage, and then a 17 against Krukka. I assume misses. Uh, it is your turn, Krukka. Uh, do you need reflex checks? I hate to ask. Um, yes, I do. Yes, I do. From you. Because you were hit. Critical success. Okay, there you go. Nice. Can he step away again? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Damn. <laughs> No, was not an escape action, just a dodge. What do you got, Krukka? Okay, Krukka will uh, take a stride to be behind the um, easternmost mimic. So that's not what I want to do. Ah, uh, there's nothing good to do. It's just going to stick to the <laughs> stupid thing. Uh, recall knowledge. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's a call it? please. I'll roll it real quick, actually. Um, yeah, you also have no idea what this is. Gross. You're used to things being hidden in the woods, not hidden as furniture. Oh. I don't get it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess if you're stuck to it, you're stuck to it. So he's just going to put a stride north of the easternmost mimic, uh, put it into flanking and smack it with the hammer. Okay. A hero point, because that was a two on the die for a 17. <laughs> okay. 32 to hit. That hits. That's a crit. Nice. Oh, yes. Not a great roll, but 12 points of bludgeoning. Okay, 12 points bludge. Uh, and roll me a reflex. Netty one. Oh, your weapon is uh, stuck <laughs> into this creature. Like real stuck, eh? More stuck than normal? Yeah. So you can spend uh, an action to athletics and get it free, wrench it free if you want. Okay. Well, that's my turn. That's three weapons. Okay. Uh, Lady Gilda, your shield is attached. Yeah. First action will be an athletics to free it. Okay. That's a 31. That's a success. Second action will be to raise said shield again. And with her third action, she's actually going to strike at this thing for the first time. Okay. 
Do you go to the one that's to the north of you? Yeah, just the one right in front okay. of her. That is a 25 to hit. That hits. 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, roll me that sweet d4. Or, I mean, a reflex save. 22. Uh, you are stuck, I'm afraid. Really? Wow. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you are grabbed. Uh, what else you got? Oh, that's all three. Okay. Pull, raise, punch. Pull, raise, punch. Uh, all right. Two lock. Can you can you save the day? This is a bit of a uh, sticky situation. <laughs> okay. Two lock will um, step or stride south and west kind of mm-hmm. back towards the door they initially came in and we'll cast a new spell Duh. called rouse skeletons oh boy <laughs> guess <good> um, <laughs> maybe you should have just been a necromancer <laughs> yeah <laughs> now okay hold on it's a 10 foot 10 foot burst is what it is um bu- bu- uh, 10 foot burst is that the diameter or the radius uh so that is so a burst is um it goes uh so a burst effect issues forth in all directions from a single corner of a square you have to pick a corner of a square rather than the middle of a square um and then okay. spread in all directions as specified uh, to a specified radius so it's a radius so it's 10 feet from the corner out in every direction Okay, so can you see where I've placed it upon the map? Yes, I can. Is the north western mimic in it? Um, it does not appear to be, no. From this area, from the stones, misshapen skeletal forms erupt and fill the burst area. The area is now difficult terrain, and their grasping claws deal 2d6 damage to creatures on the ground in the area where they first appear. Basic reflex save. Okay. Basic reflex. Gotcha. I rolled 25. You pass. So okay. you will take one point of damage. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I bet it looked really like, it? Oh, no. oh my god, you rolled two ones on 2d6. That's <laughs> right, I did. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, is there more to that spell? I hope there's more to that spell. <laughs> well, it stays. It's going to sustain. Okay, all right. That's the end of my turn, but... Okay, yeah. Mimic uh, that's got Lady Gilda attached is going to just start striking. Oh, sorry, 17. can I say one thing? Can I say one thing real quick? The reason I'm casting this is because damaging or destroying the skeletons is irrelevant as new bones pull forth from the ground to repair and replace any that have been obliterated. Uh, so okay. they can't be affected by the Mimic, I believe. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, the Mimic's not interested in them anyway. It's going to keep going at Lady Gilda. Uh, it's a miss, miss, and a twenty-three flat-footed miss. Shields oh, up, shields up, uh, and not attached. Amazing. Um, next one is going to turn around and start attacking Kruka. Uh, miss, ooh, twenty-three. You're you are attached, yes. right? So oh, oh, your, flat-footed, your weapon's yeah. attached. No, your weapon's attached, right? right? Not you. So not flat-footed. Nice. Uh, and then uh, miss again. So miss, miss, miss. Oof, not great. It's Kruka. Okay. Uh, first one will be an athletics check to get my weapon back. Mm-hmm. Uh, nat 20. Beautiful. Uh, that will give me a five-foot step to the right of my correct. That's true. Yep. Okay, that puts it into well, well, Actually, no. Uh, sorry, because you're not grabbed, so it's not an escape check. It's a oh, right, check right. to pull, okay. wrench your weapon free. So, yeah. Well, in that case, he's just going to take a step uh, to the east and... Mm-hmm. Wing with the hammer. Okay, got it flanked with Lady Gilda. Not one. <laughs> no dice. <laughs> You're rolling bad today, uh, Lady Gilda. Uh, Gilda, with her first action, is going to attempt an athletics check to pull her hand free. Okay, that's a thirty-three. That's a critical success. Okay, so you can move if you want. No need. Uh, second action will be to punch, I guess, again. Okay. You punching the one, the original one, or the one that's flanked now? 
No, it's still the one directly in front of her. Okay. Uh, that is a 31 to hit. That hits. That's not a crit. Uh, oh, actually it is. Okay. 14 points of bludgeoning. Nice. Um. Oh, reflex save. Right. <laughs> 25. Yeah, you're good. Okay. And then uh, she'll try again with a map minus four, but the flanked one with Krukka. Okay. That's a 24 to hit. That's a hit. 11 points of bludgeoning. Nice. Reflex save again. Natural 20 for a 29. Man, you're good. You're all right. Two lock. Can we finish this combat quickly? We're running long. Uh, Two lock will cast... Uh, telekinetic projectile flinging a stone at the uh, mimic harrying Gilda. Okay. 21 to hit. Hit. For 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Decent hit. Will sustain the um, the roused skeletons mm-hmm. for <laughs> 9 points of slashing damage to so the same damage. Okay. Uh, but I, I still have a reflex save, right? Yes. Uh, natural one. Nice. All right. You get the nine points. Double, do I take double damage on that? It doesn't say anything about that in the spell, but it is a basic reflex save. So if you fail, do you? I don't know. Uh, I always forget. Yeah. Uh, critical failure on a basic saving throw is double damage. 18 points of slashing nice. damage. Heck nice. Yeah. Uh, all right. Big hit. Very nice. Okay. Mimic on Gilda is going to keep on trying. 27 to hit. 27 is a hit, yes. Hey, oh, you take a big 19 damage. Roll me a reflex. 27. You good? Uh, tw- uh, 27 to hit. Yep, still a hit. 11, roll me another reflex. 17. Now you're attached. And final hit against you, flat footed, 18. Miss. Gonna miss. Yeah. Uh, okay, and the other one going to continue on Krukka. 16 to hit, miss. 12 to hit, miss. Natural 20 on the last one for a 24. It's 25 I hit. will use my uh, retributive strike if it does. Okay. Yeah, that's a meet to beat. Okay, so it actually counts as a crit. Uh, that's, oh, man, you took 36 damage. Okay. Uh, minus 8 for my strike. 28. Okay. And uh, roll me a reflex, Krukka. 29. You're good. Lady Gilda, you're you're punching. 20 to hit. That's a meat to beat. Roll me a damage. 12 points of bludgeoning. Okay, and a reflex. 26. Okay, you're good. So you managed to, like, kick that one, essentially. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking <laughs> rocks, man. <laughs> uh, Krukka, what do you got? This is almost done, guys. Let's roll through it. Well, I should have used my reaction when I just got hit, um, but I didn't. So he's going to fly into a rage. Uh, yeah, uh, that sounds like a great idea. Rage it up. Because now you he's do that more mad. often. Because <laughs> that's. Well, that's I, keep wanting, I keep wanting. I keep wanting. to remember the reaction, uh, and then. Oh uh, yeah. Then because I'm just so <laughs> affronted by the fact that. Uh, stri- <laughs> strike with the hammer for a net 20. Oh, yep. Nice. Hey, baby, one more time. For uh, 16 damage. Nice. Big hit. Roll me a reflex. That's, uh, it's four fire. Uh, 12. Physical. Okay. Uh, in this case, no, but. Okay. Uh, 17 on the reflex. Oh, you're stuck. You're grabbed. Okay. Athletics. Your weapon, or your weapon is. Athletics to get rid of it. Okay. Another net 20. Nice. Okay. One more swing. You're just going to like wrench it free and swing again? Oh, no. You raged. You raged. I raged. Uh, okay, Lady Gilda. Can you finish this with your rocks? <laughs> I'm going to certainly try. It is a 16 to wrench yourself free. No dice. Okay. Uh, instead, she's just going to move on to a single punch to the one directly in front of her. That's okay. a 22 to hit. That's a hit. 11 points of bludgeoning. Okay, big hit. 
Uh, and then the one flanking it on map minus four. That is a 23 to hit. That's a hit. Nine points of bludgeoning. And it is dead. Finally. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Two lock. All right. Two lock will sustain. So I will need a reflex save. Reflex save. 18. That is AM. Failure. So you take eight points of slashing damage. And it's dead. Nice. Abuya, <laughs> Skelly boys. <laughs> that AOE spell is awesome. That was that was a weird combat. I loved it because it's so much like, oh god, what do I do? What do I do? But you've destroyed your first uh mimics. Maybe there'll be Ooh. more. Maybe there won't, but you can see that the, there was no weapon. There was yeah. no weapon rack. In fact, the door that was there, you could see laying on the ground, cracked and broken. And it was hidden behind the mimic itself. That's it sad. also kind of looks like a face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I mean, of course, that's for now where we're going to call it. Stemming the Tide is an actual play podcast of the Adventure Path Abomination Vault and is produced by the Uncharted North Network. Stemming the Tide uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. Stemming the Tide is not published, endorsed, or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. Music is composed by Will Savino and artwork by Greyhood. Stemming the Tide is recorded remotely using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. If you wish to connect with us or support this project and projects to come, we can be found at UnchartedNorth.ca, Patreon.com slash UnchartedNorth, and on all major social media platforms. Links to all credits can be found in the episode description and our website. Thanks for tuning in.